And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host Kenneth Grunfelder and it's great to have you guys here on this Wednesday, February 14th. We have a lot to talk about on the show today. Before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized, make sure to go to the following link. That is streamelements.com slash slash tip. Again, that really helps the show, makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. Again, that is streamelements.com slash slash tip. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker on the bottom of the show segment down below. So with that being said, let's get into what we are going to talk about for today. So I want to start off the show by talking about Brandon Ayuk's uh, cryptic social media post. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second. Um then in the second part of the show, um, we're going to talk about the teams that have the best chance of dethroning the Chiefs next year as they try to go for a three-peat. is something that they are uh, talking about already, so we'll get into that. Then in the third part of the show, we'll talk about the Travis Kelsey-Andy Reid altercation on the sideline during the Super Bowl. Um, I'll give you my thoughts on that. I know I did touch upon it briefly when talking about the game, but I just wanted to talk about that um, today and then we'll take a look at the free agent class for this year talk about the top free agents that will be on the market unless you know maybe they're franchise tagged so uh yeah that's basically the rundown for the show because uh, obviously well the free agency you know we're in the off season now so this is uh this is what we're going to be talking about the you know speculation on where certain guys can go so yeah, so with that being said, let's get into the first topic, which is talking about Brandon Ayuk. So yesterday, I think it was yesterday, he he posted on his Instagram uh, something. And also there were some other um, things to come out. So I know, his, I think his brother said something. And also his um, his girlfriend said something, that this was like the last time that he would be playing in Levi Stadium. Um, so then he goes and posts on social media, if I could pull it up here. Um, so yeah, he posted on his, uh, Instagram story. Don't forget what got you there. So, um, Brandon Ayuk is entering the final year of his rookie contract. Um, and there's a lot of speculation on, you know, what's going to happen. Are the 49ers going to be able to retain him? And um, his base salary for 2024 is 14.1 million. Um, he did s indicate that he wants to stay with the 49ers if it's the right move. Um, and he basically said, you know, winning a championship is a priority. Um, wants a long-term contract that gives him more than obviously his current salary. Um, if you know, if they work on a contract negotiation and that ends up you know, falling through, there's a possibility that he could be traded. And we've seen that, you know, with certain guys. We've seen that with A.J. Brown. We saw that with Tyree Kill. You know, it's possible we could see that here with Brandon Ayuk. Um, well, actually, yeah, I think what his brother said, it was something about, I know it was about him only having three catches. And, yeah, him and Debo Samuel both had three catches in the Super Bowl. McCaffrey had eight. Um... And George Kittle only had two. So, you know, we talk about all these playmakers. And, you know, McCaffrey had the best game out of everybody. Um, but, you know, Ayuk, Debo, and George Kittle, they, you know, really didn't have an, a huge – they really didn't have a huge impact in the game. Um, you know, obviously they made big plays at certain moments. I mean, George Kittle had the fourth down catch uh, that set up the, 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 uh, the Juwan, Je Juwan Jennings uh, touchdown reception. But, yeah, I, I mean, Ayuk had some big catches. Debo was obviously in and out because he was dealing with that hamstring injury. But, yeah, I mean, they, they really did not have big games. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. This is going to be an interesting situation. Um, you know, obviously, uh, the 49ers are going to want to try to keep Ayuk because, you know, he had a great season this year. And, um, you know, it's just, I, I, I get players want to get paid, but also, you know, it, it, when he's saying his desire is to win a championship, I think 
you know, the 49ers are one of the few teams that could still, you know, next year they're going to have most of their players um, from this year. The, the free agents that they have, there's nobody really um, big that's going to be on the that that's going to become a free agent with the 49ers, at least from what I saw. Um, so th this is one of the teams that's still, you know, is going to be at the top when trying to contend for a championship next year. So if Brandon Ayuk wants to, you know, win a championship, I think really at this moment, uh, his best choice is to stick with the 49ers, unless the Chiefs come calling and he goes to the Chiefs. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's where you should stay. I mean, the 49ers, you know, they could have won this game. It's just, you know, there were some miscues that kind of, you know, led to the Chiefs cashing in. And, yeah, I mean, it, they're really... It really all goes back to I think the the muff punt that that really just changed the whole complexion of the game, um, and I know people are talking about oh well you know the Forty ers how they handled overtime wasn't good and they didn't know the overtime rules. I don't know. I feel like I'm in the minority with that. I I just think look, you got the ball, you got points out of it. I mean yeah, if you go for if you go for it and don't get it, you're probably gonna lose anyways because. Mahomes is going to take it right down the field and get in the field goal range, and that's going to be how you lose that way. And then it's like, and then people are going to say, "Oh, why didn't they take the points?" Uh, you know, it, it just, I don't know. I I understand Kyle Shanahan's logic. You get the ball, you score seven, and then you know you make the Chiefs go the length of the field to try to beat you or to try to tie it, even though they said they'd go for two. So it really would have came down to that if the the Forty Niners, um, you know, went for. Um, went for it and got a touchdown out of it. and But yeah, it would have came down to the Chiefs going down the field. They would have went down the field, scored a touchdown. They would have went for two, and that would have decided the game. That would have decided the game. Because I know yesterday I was saying, so if they went for two and they got it and went ahead, would that have been... Yeah, so that would have been the end of the game. Um, which makes sense. But I, I just wasn't 100%. I just wasn't sure because, you know, it's the first time that they were playing under these uh, new rules. But... Um, yeah, I, I mean, listen, you know, it's – for Brandon Ayuk, yeah, I mean, only having three catches in the Super Bowl, yeah, I mean, you want to make more of an impact. Um, but the 49ers, their game plan was Christian McCaffrey, you know, and, and that's who they ran their offense through the whole game. That was their game plan. They didn't really deviate from it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, again, you want to make more of an impact, but – it just didn't happen that way. But, I again, there's very few teams, when you look at the landscape of the NFL, that you could say that's a championship team. And, listen, the 49ers, they've gotten to this point a lot recently. It's just they keep falling short. And, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else you could do because, you know, the roster's loaded. You got playmakers all over the place. On defense and on offense. Now, you could look at the quarterback position, and there was definitely a difference between Brock Purdy. Definitely is a difference between Brock Purdy and Patrick Mahomes, and we talked about that. Patrick Mahomes being this generational talent, one of the all-time greats. And then he got Brock Purdy, who is a solid quarterback, but, you know, is he going to be the guy? He's not going to elevate the guys around him. Um, the guys around him are going to elevate him. Um, now, Brock Purdy has, I think, has been the best quarterback that Kyle Shanahan has had since he's taken over as the 49ers head coach. But, again, you look at some of the quarterbacks that he's coached, and, yeah, I mean, you know, C.J. Beathard, Nick Mullins, I mean, those guys are backup quarterbacks that um, that won games this year. I know C.J. Beathard won a game with the, the Jaguars. Did Nick Mullins win a game with the, the Vikings? Because, I mean, they, they, I think, I don't know, did did they win with Nick, did Nick Mullins win a game with the Vikings this year? I mean, because he, he, you know, you know, he put up numbers, but, well, I mean, he threw interceptions a lot. But still, like, um, I'll have to look. But anyways, yeah, so Brock Purdy, again, is the best quarterback that they have had in the system. But, um... Oh, yeah, they did. Well, I guess when they put him in against the Raiders, they won. But 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, they pretty much lost every game that Nick Mullins played in. Well, pretty much every game he started. So, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, again, with the 49ers, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else you could do. Um, I mean, I guess, like, they could have gotten their receivers and George Kittle more involved. Um, I mean, Juwan Jennings had a good game. You know, um, I don't know. I guess that's just how that's just how the game went. Um, but you know, the 49ers, they, they, listen. At, at some point, a lot of these guys are going to want to get paid, and you're going to have to do that, and you're not going to be able to keep everybody. So, I, I mean, if Ayuk sticks around, unless he wants to be traded, um, you know, this could be like the last chance you have with all these guys together to go out and try to win a championship next year. So, and yeah, it's just, it's unfortunate that this team just keeps coming up short every year. Um, you know, they are a very good team. Definitely had a chance to win the Super Bowl this year. It's just, it was that, it was that team once again that took them down. And, um, you know, with, with next year, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, listen, they could have very easily not have made it to the Super Bowl. They could have lost to the Packers. They could have lost to the Lions. I mean, the Lions, they were they were losing by 17 points. But they came back. And, um, you know, again, they just, they came up short. And, um, you know, it, it's, and this, again, this is not the first time that we're seeing a receiver you know, posting something on social media and making it known that, uh, you know, they want to get paid. Because we see star receivers get traded. And also Devontae Adams, too. Devontae Adams, another one. I said Tyreek Hill. I said A.J. Brown. Devontae Adams is another one. Got traded. So, you know, and those and those three guys that I mentioned before, you know, Devontae, A.J. Brown, Tyreek Hill, those receivers are better than Brandon Ayuk. I mean, Ayuk is one of the better receivers in the NFL, but I wouldn't say he's at the level of those guys. Um, but, yeah, I mean, listen, it's going to be something that we got to keep an eye on. But unless there's a team that, you know, maybe comes calling and gives an offer the 49ers can't refuse, I mean, I I, I don't know. If I'm Brandon Ayuk, I think you st stick with San Francisco. You run it back next year, and you see what happens. Um, but I don't know. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be an interesting off season, and um, you know, again, it's we're we're not even like a week in. We're we're in the first week after the Super Bowl, and uh, already we're 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 starting with this. But you know, it's just I and I, I'm not a fan of that. You, you know, you're like calling out your team like that, but. I, you know what? I, I guess that's just that's just what these players do sometimes, and um, you know we'll see what the 49ers you know can do to try to you know make sure that he uh, he stays. But again, it's something we'll keep an eye on throughout the off season. Um, listen, I, as a uh, as a giant fan, you know they they need receivers. So listen, come on down if you if you want to. Uh, you want to go to a different team because the Giants need all the help they can to get but yeah let me know what you guys think about this situation um yeah because it's interesting because yeah you had his girlfriend saying this is the last game we're going to play at Levi Stadium you had you know his brother posting something about his stats from the Super Bowl you have him posting something so um there, there there's something going on there and um Look, it's a long off season, so um, you know we'll see uh, how this all, you know, develops, um, you know, as we uh, as we move along here. But yeah, I mean that's pretty much it when talking about this. Um, again, let me know what you guys think about this uh, this topic. Um, so when we come back from our, we're gonna take our first break. When we come back from our first break, uh, we are then going to discuss. Uh, who can dethrone the Chiefs? Now, obviously, we just talked about the 49ers, so 
you know, you could probably add them to the list. Um, but I'll talk about the teams that have, like, the best chance to dethrone the Chiefs as they are trying to go for that three-peat. They're already talking about that. So we'll talk about the teams that have the best chance to take them down next year. So with that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. 